a spike in sales in just two years. It's not beer, and even though a lot of it is made in Kentucky, it's not bourbon. We're going to come back down here in the woods and we're going to check out something I think you guys like to see. This is a typical moonshine still setup in West Kentucky. The reason this is out in the woods is because it's illegal federally. Not only is it illegal federally, it's illegal in the state. And uh, the state police come, you're going down. That's all there is to it. So what they do, they come out here and covertly do their own whiskey. In 2011, Chris Kelly started his own moonshine business. If you can bake biscuits, you can bake moonshine. This is moonshine mecca, especially West Kentucky, West Tennessee. Uh, and it's been a heavy tradition since Prohibition. Al Capone got his moonshine from Golden Pond just 30 minutes down the road. For years, families in Appalachia perfected their illegal craft by the light of the moon. Hence the name, Moonshiners. I had a cousin come bring me my first moonshine, and ever since then I was hooked. I was hooked on the moonshine. And now the Kelly clan is reaping the benefits of the moonshine boom, but not by making the backwoods elixir. Of course, making the alcohol is illegal, but making the steel is totally safe. I like making steels because it's something that normal kids my age wouldn't do. But what you do with the still? Well, that's your business. I'm not going to tell you to do anything illegal, uh, but if you want to stay within the realm of not going to jail, then I suggest you getting on there and getting an ethanol license. And that way you can legally produce this product, but it better not leave the property. Now more and more people are jumping on the bandwagon. In 2010, a mere 50,000 cases of shine were sold in the U.S. But in 2012, that number rose to 280,000. The stills I build today are going to North Carolina, Georgia, Missouri, Texas, Florida, and quite a few in Kentucky. Even though distilling your own liquor remains a crime in most states, the moonshine craze is showing up in some very unlikely places. You know, people are always attracted to things that you're not supposed to do, we'll be honest. And the idea of saving money on your alcohol expenses uh, is very appealing. To know that I can make something that's as good as a 50 or $60 bottle of vodka for the equivalent of 8 to $10 in parts is great. And people come over, they, they know I'm the guy who makes awesome stuff that you can't get anywhere else. There are politicians that are getting into this. There are lawyers getting into this. There are doctors getting into this. And they bring it back to their pool room in their basement and hanging out with their buddies drinking. This is bragging rights for them. But this craft will always be soaked in its rich history of us against them. For me, moonshine and making moonshine, making moonshine stills is in my blood. It's in our heritage. Generations, four or five generations deep. Coldwater, Kentucky is where my relatives were from to make moonshine. I don't want to mention their names because there's probably still some of that family making moonshine over there. But yeah, they still make a living doing this to this day. So what have we discovered by chasing the data on food and drink? Well, pizza is becoming...